Hi, my name is Chris Humphrey and I'm the author of a new series of books called Leo's Map of Monsters. This is the first book, uh, it came out last summer and it's called The Armoured Gortusk, which is the name of this brutish beast right here. Uh, beautifully illustrated, just like the rest of the book, by Pete Williamson. And the series is about a boy called Leo. Uh, Leo lives in a village in the middle of a very big forest and like most people in the village, he's never left the village. He's never been into the forest because everybody's always told him how dangerous it, it is. So there are bears and wolves, they say, and big cats with pointy teeth and robbers and all kinds of things. So you don't want to go into the forest. And he's never been until his ninth birthday, that is, when he receives a, a letter telling him that he's going to become an apprentice to the guardian. Now he doesn't know what this means, but the village chief comes to his house and takes him through a secret door out into the forest where he meets the guardian in this little hut in the forest and he finds out that actually it's not bears and wolves and robbers that you have to be worried about out there, it's monsters. Monsters like the gore tusk. So he finds out that his, his mission from then on will be to protect the village from monsters, which is a pretty big assignment in itself. But not only that, he has to keep them a secret as well. Nobody else apart from the village chief and the guardian know that these monsters even exist. Uh, if they did, it would be panic. So he has to keep it all a secret. He can't tell anyone, not his family, not his best friend, nobody. Luckily, he will have some help uh, in his mission because he makes friends, uh, not with a person, but with a monster. So this is Starla. Once again, lovely illustration by Pete Williamson. And Starla is kind of a flying weasel and a really big long tail. And they meet each other and they become friends and they argue a bit and Starla helps him out while he's trying to find these monsters and uh, keep them away and protect the village. Now, this was the first book in the series, but excitingly, the second book is just about to come out and it's called the Spitfang Lizard. So this monster is a big lizard, as big as a goat, big teeth. Uh, and the scariest thing about it is it spits some really sticky spit onto anything it wants to eat to immobilize them. Uh, so you've got to be pretty careful around these. So I'm going to read you a little bit from the Spitfang Lizard. Um, and it's from Leo's point of view and we're going to join him and Starla out in the forest already there. They're out there searching for this, for the Spitfang lizards. Okay. I was descending a steep section of the hillside and as I spoke my feet suddenly flew out from under me and I crashed onto my behind, sliding down the slope towards a wide dry gully. I landed with a thump I lay on my back feeling stunned. I could hear Starla flapping about trying to find me, but when I sat up, it wasn't Starla I saw. Two yellow-green reptilian eyes peered down at me, unblinking from about three paces away. The creature that the eyes belonged to was scaly and spiky and somewhere between a goat and a horse in size. Its scales were a mix of blues and greens and its muscular legs jutted out from the sides of its body tapering down to viciously clawed feet. Its head was long and snouty with a loose flap of pinkish skin under its chin. This was the Spitfang lizard I'd been searching for. The monster was utterly still, so still that it didn't even seem to be breathing. As I lay there staring, a hopeful thought crossed my mind. Maybe it was asleep. My uncle Silas slept with his eyes open sometimes. Then the Spitfang opened its mouth and hissed, revealing two rows of glistening, needle-sharp teeth. Nope, it definitely wasn't sleeping. I scrambled backwards, desperately trying to climb to my feet, but the loose leaves and pine needles kept me, making me slip. The Spitfang hissed at me again, its teeth dripping with saliva. The flap of skin beneath its throat pulsated, then swelled rapidly until, until there was a huge, bloated pouch beneath its scaly chin. I clambered to my feet and reached for my slingshot. The lizard hissed and twitched, its huge claws dug deeper into the ground. I knew it was about to spit. I needed a stone, something that would scare it off, 
but every time I moved my hand the creature jerked its head and edged forwards threateningly. These monsters were fast, Starla had said. It would probably be on me before I could even load the stone, let alone fire it with a slingshot. The spitfang snapped its jaws. Its throat pou pouch looked like it was ready to burst. I decided I had to move carefully. If this spitfang was anything like the other lizard monsters I'd read about, then slow movements were the only way to escape attack. Very slowly, I lifted my right foot from the ground and took a tiny step back. The lizard didn't move. That was good. I lifted my left foot ever so slowly, hardly daring to breathe, my heart pounding like a blacksmith's hammer. Again, the monster stayed where it was. It wanted me gone, I realised. That was all. It didn't want to fight. I raised my right foot once again, placing it very carefully behind me, keeping my eyes on the monster, watching as its eyes twitched and it tasted the air with its long pink tongue. It was okay. I was going to go back away and everything would be fine. Then, with the worst possible timing, Starla came crashing through the branches above. I'm here, Leah Wilder, I'm here. Are you all right? The lizard reared up onto its hind legs, spooked by all the noise, and sent a gurgling stream of thick yellow spit directly at me. I turned my back and dived to the side, but not quickly enough. The spit hit my legs and knocked me sideways, sending me crashing awkwardly onto my side. I tried to get up and run, but my legs wouldn't move. When I looked down, I saw that they were stuck inside a cocoon of congealing yellow gunge. It was what the guardians, it was then that the guardians' advice rang out in my head. First they spit, then they bite. So that was an extract from the Spitfang Lizard, uh, the second book in Leo's Map of the Monster series, uh, coming out on the 4th of February. And um, I thought I'd give you a little challenge to do. Um, seeing as Leo has to go out and face monsters in the forest all the time and he could he could come up against anything, any kind of monster, um, I thought maybe you could do a similar thing. I want you to have a think. Imagine that when you get up tomorrow morning and you look out the window, you don't see your streets or your garden, or whatever you usually see. You see some, a small village and beyond that, a big forest. And I want you to imagine that instead of going out for a walk to the shops, Anywhere you were going to go, you actually walk out into the forest and it's very quiet and there are no other people about and the trees are big and it's dark. I want you to imagine that when you're all alone, you hear something and you know that it's going to be a monster. You know, and it could be a friendly monster like Starla, it could be a new friend or it could be a kind of scary monster like the Spitfang Lizard. You just don't know. But what I want you to do is imagine what kind of monster you might see. I want you to design your own monster. So I want you to think about a few things. First of all, what does it look like? Is it a big, small, what colour? Um, is it kind of a lizard? Is it hairy? You know, what's it face? What's its face like? Does it have tusks? Does it have big teeth? Can it fly? All kinds, of, all kinds of things. Okay, what does it look like? And also, what does it do? Uh, how does it move? Um, what does it eat? You know, does it eat people? Boys called Leo? Or does it eat um, fruit? You know, some monsters definitely eat fruit. Okay, and the last one is what kind of environment does it live in? Okay, so it's it's in the forest. Does it live up in the trees? Does it live in a river? Maybe it lives in the mountains beyond the forest or somewhere else altogether. So when you think about those things, what it looks like, what it does, what it eats and where it lives. Um, and if you want to, you can also draw a picture of it. Or you could start with a picture like I did when I was designing uh, the Armoured Gortusk. So, it's been lovely to speak to you. Um, I hope that you enjoy the books and I hope you enjoy your challenge. Bye for now. <laughs>